Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you for joining me once again. So we're going to start with Super Typhoon Jebby, which is the Earth's strongest storm of 2018. And it will be a threat to Japan early next week. So this will be the most intense storm so far in 2018. And right now it's spinning northwest of Guam as the rain starts to pour down here in Florida once again. And uh, I was out earlier and just thinking of what some of you guys have said, especially like last night in the chat, in the uh, live show that we had, had a lot of really interesting comments. Lots of people are, are feeling the same things. And, you know, the sky just doesn't look the same anymore. It's, it's, it's a thing of the past. And uh, the waters are not looking the same. Even on the East Coast, I had people saying that they're finding dead fish on the East Coast of Florida as well. And it just doesn't look as nice as it used to. Uh, so now we have Jebby, which is going to turn northeast and pose a threat to Japan on Tuesday. Damaging winds, rainfall, flooding, mudslides, coastal flooding, all possible. It will be a 13th tropical cyclone to have affected a part of Japan since mid-June. 13 in uh, about 10 weeks. That's, they're getting hammered. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. Uh, they're getting hammered big time. And right now it's a Category 5 powerhouse. So it's very, very strong. And it, it should lose some steam as it, uh, it goes and hits Japan. And Japan will get hit again. Yet again. And um, right now it actually packs winds of 175 miles per hour. Uh, that's impressive. 20 mile I wide. I that's that's it's a very very strong storm. And so you know we'll pray for Japan again, and we'll see what happens with that. It should weaken as it approaches. If we jump over to Ventuski, um, let me see what I have this on. I think I have this on tomorrow or. Let's go. Oh, I got it on Monday. Okay, let's bring it back a little bit. There's a couple things that we're seeing. For one, we see the first, some of the first formations of what could end up turning into uh, a hurricane or a tropical storm over in the Atlantic. If we pop out a day, we see it strengthening over here. Two days starts to take a more typical area, a more typical path that we've seen. We go out to Monday, Tuesday, it's strengthening. Wednesday, and thankfully it looks like it's going to go too far north to really make any serious impact as we go out to Thursday, Friday, and we'll jump out to the following Sunday. Uh, very formidable looking, but too far north to really do anything more than likely you know you never never know so never say never but more than likely this should not uh, be something that affects the US you know outside chance potentially uh, out there in, in Canada Newfoundland but more than likely not so jumping back over well, let's look at what's going on over here in the Pacific which looks pretty active and you can see that that conveyor belt still in action over here as we see Jebby down here. So let's just see how it looks going the day out. As you can see, two days out, and we see some formation over here of other ones. Jumping over to Monday, heading up into the area. So it starts to go pretty much straight north hitting that area that has been so devastated so many times and they're gonna get more more moisture and then it just quickly comes up and shoots right through on Tuesday and then we see over here growing stronger some other storms potentially we jump over to Thursday you see them getting stronger And look at it, it's just like a conveyor belt. A 
one after another. And so there we see Alaska, and here we see Hawaii. So these are all looking like they're going to go north of Hawaii, and let's hope that's the case. And this is all we have at the moment right now going out to the 9th. So, you know, definitely keep an eye on those as far as Hawaii goes as well. And we have France hit by brutal thunderstorms. We've been talking so much about how the, the thunder doesn't sound like old thunder. It just rolls forever. It's like you keep waiting for it to stop, and it just keeps going and going and going. And uh, so we're seeing a lot of that, or we're hearing a lot of that. We're seeing a lot of intense uh, lightning strikes, and people are using the plasma word more to describe them because it just seems like they're more intense well, France was hit by brutal thunderstorms, bringing more than 100,000 lightning strikes in 12 hours. That's amazing. 40,000 of which struck in the northern part of the country. They had storm warnings in nine regions in the southwest of France, inviting, uh, advising residents to stay at home. Amazing. Some areas, almost 40 millimeters of rain fell within less than an hour. These heavy downpours were accompanied by winds reaching 120 kilometers an hour in some places. The storm started quickly and suddenly. The heavens just opened up hugely and the lightning and thunder weren't to stop anymore. And so you, get, you have a video here for you guys to play as well. And residents were advised to stay at home or stay in vehicles on the road due to possible lightning strikes. In the Charente area, 70 firemen were mobilized to clear up fallen trees that had blocked the roads. And look at this shelf cloud. We're seeing them everywhere. They're amazing to see. And last night when I was going to sleep, I was seeing a shelf, shelf cloud or several shelf clouds in my dreams. And I wasn't even fully asleep yet. I was kind of in that in-between place. And then I saw these giant ships, you know, kind of rolling out of them. And uh, it was just so curious, you know, like UFOs hidden up in them. And uh, some people have said, you know, they wonder what's going on with these clouds and those strange noises and the thunder that almost sounds more like maybe it's not thunder at all. So the main advice during lightning is to seek shelter inside, stay away from the water, open spaces, avoid getting too close to trees and other tall objects. The risk of getting hit increases with the temperature, so it's more important to be vigilant when the warm weather arrives. So according to Meteo France, a new record of lightning impacts has been set in 2018 in France. Sometimes Mother Nature gets angry. Okay, is it alien or what? Weird trumpet sounds heard in Germany, Malaysia, and the USA in August 2018. <clears throat> so we have more and more of them. Uh, this one here is from Bavaria, Germany. And then we have one below it from Penang, Malaysia. And we have one below it uh, in Dallas. And uh, they're creepy. You know, uh, they're just creepy. And gosh, what was it? Um, Some people have commented about how they sound like alien ships. They really do sound like something from outer space. Um, so similar to what we've heard in some, some movies. Really makes you wonder what's going on. You know, if, if you're into the UFOs and extraterrestrial theories and all that, I've heard it said that the, uh, the Draco, the reptilians, you know, they're all over our skies. We just can't see them. Uh, because they're cloaked in their giant ships, which are usually cigar shaped, you know, but now maybe that with the dimensions changing the vibration changing Maybe now it's something where we could start to see them more start to hear them more Because we're actually rising up in vibration and frequency so that they're not going to be able to hide from us anymore and uh, perhaps that's part of what's going on but I'll let you guys play them and and I'll have the link as always and see what you guys think as far as the sounds go. Um, definitely creepy. 
To me, yeah, I, I could definitely imagine their giant ships in the air above us, you know, gigantic motherships. And all these new terms. Now, I only saw this quoted going back to like 2010. Anti-crepuscular rays. Say what? So do, uh, they're, they're just trying to give us a term to explain something that people are calling attention to, saying, hey, these rays aren't coming from the sun. Are they coming from a second sun? What's going on here? And so this is a term. And uh, they're also known as anti-solar rays, or rays that are not from <laughs> uh, the sun. Uh, they're atmospheric phenomena, optical phenomena appearing opposite of the sun in the sky. Oh, you know, how quaint they have this term for something now that people have been seeing now for many years and increasing frequency, you know, in vastly increasing frequency. And, uh, you know, now they just make a term as if, oh, you know, we got a term for it, so don't worry, it's a natural phenomenon. Sure, you know, yeah, sure, okay. So anyway, anti-crepuscular rays, there you go. Okay, so from gopher hole to large pond, giant growing sinkhole fills up with water in Oxford, Nova Scotia. And uh, this was the size of a gopher hole, and that's a big gopher now, more like a Godzilla-sized gopher. Officials have called in some high-tech equipment to Oxford to determine how big a massive sinkhole is likely to get. The sinkhole is expanding towards a road, a gas station, and a coffee shop that could also get swallowed up by this crater that's growing underground. Uh, very interesting, and this is Nova Scotia. The sinkhole in Oxford was first discovered by the end of July and was called a gopher hole at the time. Now it has grown to an amazing 34 meters long, 28.5 meters wide. A large pond. Yeah, that's a huge gopher hole. So we're seeing this in many diverse areas. The earth is expanding. The earth is definitely feeling stress. We have a Venezuelan power station explosion illuminate the night sky. There's no, they, you know, there's no explanation for exactly what happened. Uh, there is a video for you guys to check out here as well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of scary because it, it just kind of goes on down the street. And um, the awestruck onlookers cry out in dismay, especially as it starts coming towards them. The whole street is exploding. Look, says one stunned local. It sparks rain down from the electrical cables running the entire length of the street as multiple detonations rumbled in the distance. The first explosions were horrific. Very interesting. You know, it's, what can you say? Interesting times for sure. As we talked about yesterday, man has his arm amputated days after contracting flesh-eating bacteria from sushi. So he developed this after eating raw sushi. So we had reasons not to eat beef yeah, you know, with the mad cow and the E. coli, and now watch out for your sushi eating as well. And so his, he had to have his left arm amputated after he contracted this flesh-eating bacteria. 71-year-old South Korean man developed fever and pain in his hand just hours after eating raw sushi, so it happened really fast. As you can see, so another reason perhaps to go vegetarian? Russophobia, digest part seven. US military fires blamed on Russian ray. And Russia today is targeted. Huh. So there's a military flavor to this week's digest because there's one weapon that can always be deployed to full effect. It's the trusty Russophobia ray. Facts, geography, and Russia today are all in the crosshairs this week. A U.S. Army colonel accused Russia today of ridiculous misinformation because it reported a Russian government suggestion that the Islamic State is operating inside a U.S. controlled zone in Syria. Colonel Sean Ryan didn't enjoy hearing that the Islamic State terrorists may have found shelter in the Rubicon refugee camp, which falls in the region the U.S. military is patrolling. 
Some may be amazed that he hasn't noticed himself. No need to believe Russia's foreign ministry, though, Colonel, because the UN, NBC, and the Jordanian army are saying the same thing. Always remember that in the mind of a Russophobe, even the truth is misinformation when the Russians say it. And so it's just another case of what's going on that's being built up. As we can see here, Iran moves missiles to Iraq in warning to enemies. Iran has given ballistic missiles to the Shiite proxies in Iraq and is developing the capability or capacity to build more there to deter attacks on its interest in the Middle East and to give it means to hit regional foes. Iranian, Iraqi, and Western sources said, any sign that Iran is preparing a more aggressive missile policy in Iraq will exacerbate the tensions between Tehran and Washington already heightened by U.S. President Trump's decision to pull out of the 2015 nuclear deal with world powers. You know, it, it, it all feels so ominous with all this part. I mean, you know, perhaps that's part of the whole thing. Just make it feel ominous. Just scare people. Keep people focused on this, maybe even, you know, as uh, opposed to all the Earth destruction going on everywhere. But it does feel like there's something really building here, especially when, like we talked about last night on the live show, too, you know, you have Russia and China dumping the uh, petrol dollar, you know, just dumping the dollar in general. Um, it feels like things are shifting to a different level. And as we were saying, you know, trade wars can turn into actual wars. And then you put into effect also the fact that these countries know there's going to be only so much food and, and China is stopping their exports and Russia's going to stop their wheat exports as the rolling thunder starts. And the rain is pouring out there. And it's still going, still going, still rumbling, still rumbling, still rumbling. still rumbling and I think it finally stopped so yeah it's it's really interesting to listen to that you guys are hearing it too everywhere it's just like the thunder just keeps going on it's weird so a million habitable planets could theoretically orbit a black hole and here's how and instead of like looking at the article in depth and everything really I think the point is that they keep leaking out these things that show the feasibility of the whole Planet X Nibiru phenomenon, or perhaps even the stellar core phenomenon. Uh, because there was an other, another article in here as well. Um, this is from space.com, the other one was from Live Science that was talking about how black holes could actually reanimate stellar cores. So it was kind of interesting as well. and. Uh, you know, that whole stellar core theory by Dr. Claudia Albers and probably others as well. She's the only one I've ever heard really talking about it. Um, maybe there's some credence to that. Maybe there's some credence also to the whole Planet X Nibiru thing. That would explain kind of everything going on, why everything's getting triggered. It really would. As we get more thunder rolling in. So... They say that you wouldn't really even notice it so much, and they're talking about a binary system with a sun, our sun, and a black hole as a binary. So, you know, as time goes by, we keep getting more and more things dropped on us that's really leading credence to the whole Nibiru Planet X thing. And so is it that we're getting too close to the event horizon where it doesn't really matter anymore and they might as well leak us a little bit of the truth? Or is this another misdirection that they want us to go on? Um, I don't have the answers. Uh, I'm just putting the questions out there, you know, and honestly, it's like as you go along, you know, sometimes there's evidence that'll get you thinking one way and then some other stuff will come out and you'll start thinking, maybe a little bit different way. I think it is important to um, keep an open mind and be, be willing to always reassess what's going on. Um, the only thing I could say for sure is something's going on. <laughs> for sure, there's definitely things going on. 
Like they pose the question, what if the sun had a black hole companion? And then basically they say, you know, it really wouldn't assume, uh, change things that much. Now, you know, there's some strange things in our solar system. You know, like we've talked about before, why does Venus go the opposite way uh, as far as its rotation? Um, you know, what was exactly in between, you know, Mars and Jupiter in the asteroid belt? Was it, was it Tiamat? Was it Maldek? What, what was it exactly? You know, did the survivors of that actually, did they go on to the moon? Did they go on to Mars and, and you know, establish colonies there? Did they come on to Earth? Were there any survivors? You know, who was on Earth at that time? There's so many things to look into and so many things to, to digest. Um, but basically what they're talking about here is the fact that life is abundant in the universe. You know, hab habitable planets are probably everywhere. As this says, one million habitable planets could theoretically orbit a black hole. And, you know, it's just, a, it's getting us used to the idea that there's a lot of life out there. Um, there's probably all sorts of extraterrestrial life and tons of interdimensional life all around us right now walking through us this very moment. It appears that, you know, the universe is all about life. That's what it's all about. Consciousness, life. Pretty fascinating stuff here, too. So, as always, I'll have the links for you guys to go into. And, and I wanted to share a lot of the photos that you guys are sending in. Um, I'm not going to remember everybody's name that sent in these because this is, this is from a good, you know, six to ten different people. Um, and the questions are, you know, what are we looking at? A stellar core... You know, Nibiru, what, what exactly are we seeing uh, in these photos? And I'm not going to, you know, give you even my opinion because I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, you know, can't say definitively. And, uh, but I'll let you guys see what you think. So, you know, positing on this one, this was from John, John Beggs. And, uh, you know, his question mark was Nibiru. Is it Nibiru related? What are these? And you know, is this is this why they're really doing so much chemtrails? I mean, I think there's multiple things with the chemtrails. You know, probably are trying to block some things out. I'm sure there's there's multiple purposes for them. Some of which, and it's always so easy for me to see faces in these things as well. I mean, those look like glowing eyes. Um, the initial thought was trying to cool off the Earth with rampant glo global warming by barium and aluminum, which we do see in elevated amounts and has just been increasing by the decade which they blame on you know different sources of course not the chemtrails is that a black triangle up in that cloud hidden some of you guys have eagle eyes I guess you could almost see like there could be a massive black triangle hidden in there. I'm not sure if there was something else he wanted to see in those. It's an interesting object and I don't know if that's an artifact up here. Go down into these. I got a lot of them down here as well. 
This was sent in by our sassy Susie saying, does the moon look weird? And uh, there's been a lot of things about the moon. For one, is it turned on its side? Because it does appear to be in many photos. And in this one, I'm not sure what she was referring to, although it does look like there's energy coming off of it. And this area over here looks curious as well. Um, I don't know. Very interesting. Now this is from my video on the beach from yesterday. And one of our uh, Marie um, said, do you see the stellar core? And I didn't, honestly, although I did notice an unusual cloud hanging low in the horizon or what I thought was a cloud. And so she, she adjusted some things to make it stick out more. And so that's one of the photos. That's a close-up of it. That's more of an original, as you see it in the distance. And a close-up, enhanced in the distance. It's curious. I, I don't. I don't know what it is. And that's again one from Cindy. Now this one, I didn't see it at first, and there is definitely kind of scary-looking faces in there. It makes you wonder if it's interdimensional. And um, I don't know. Do you guys see it in there? Do you see a face? It almost looks like a little girl's face up here to me. Um, and you could probably hear Zeke panting because he hates these these storms. Absolutely hates these storms. And this is kind of a double sun photo. So is this sun simulator and the actual sun? Yeah, obviously chemtrails. It does look creepy. And then, I don't know, this looks like the beginning of a rainbow over to me here, but um, I don't really see a second sun, but there's, you know, almost like a rainbow light here. That almost looks like a triangle right there, doesn't it? But it could have also just been maybe, I don't know, that's interesting. Maybe a cloaked triangle right there. It's kind of curious. It's going to suggest chemtrail spraying, but it is interesting. So I just wanted to share those with you guys. And then also share th this with you guys. So this... This is BioCell. This was somebody that sent me in um, some info from his channel. And it's a newer channel. And he's talking about spontaneous human combustion on some of them. But it's really all about plasma, plasma discharges. So, you know, he really thinks a lot of what we're seeing going on rela is related to the plasma discharges. Some of the cases of spontaneous human combustion, the California wildfires. And he thinks some of those are... Uh, related to, to plasma discharge as well. And so, you know, it just was giving you a link so you could check out his channel as well. Um, and this is our own Gordon McWhorter. Gordon was on last night, as always, always in the chat room. 
And so he, while he was g golfing with his buddies, he came upon a tree that was kind of just leaking water. And let me see if I could turn up the volume a little bit so you guys could hear. Drop the rain right. on, underneath the tree. This is amazing. What are we seeing here, Casey? It, 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 there's a drip line up there. No, it's coming out of the tree. That's an actual tree. I can't see it. Scott, you gotta come see this, man. Tell me what's going on over here. Please. 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 Please come here. I don't understand. It's, it's drawing so water from a natural spring. The same thing that makes all of these ponds around here. Have you ever seen a tree blow water? No, it's blowing my balls up. But Thank you. It's blowing your balls know, up right now. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what this is. Shit. Is. It's truly amazing. But truly amazing. Uh, <laughs> so that's our own Gordon with his amazing miracle tree. And you have the link for his channel as well. And this is our own Rosie Jenner, uh, who is actually a seriously talented art artist, as well as a talented juggler. It, and this is an amazing uh, painting that she did as well. So this is a painting that she channeled And there's actually a face within this. And she does these amazing paintings. So this is our own Rosie Jenner. A lot of people said this looked like an army helmet, but I drew it as a hood. It's got the fingers pulling with the hood. My painting speaks to me at different times, so this one was done about a year and a half ago and it's just coming up more now um there's many layers to this one i don't know if most of the twins will be able to see it but there's actually a being inside this painting so here's the head it's holding the ball here and here are the arms coming out and it's cradling sometimes when you get into certain states when you stare at it it's actually rocking you see the arms walking. There's also like a box that's facing it. One of my friends that passed. She's, uh, she's a very talented artist. I just wanted to show you some of our, our other family members and some of their endeavors. So my friends, as always, please do thumbs up to uh, support the channel. Do subscribe. Make sure you click the bell so you get all the updates and share with as many people out there as possible. May you guys always be blessed with abundant peace, love, health, happiness, and all good things, my friends. God bless and namaste.